Hello, we will be continuing with FNAF mechanics. In this video, I will be covering the power system. In this overview, you can see the power gradually go down and it speeds up once we use more devices like the doors and lights. Open up your game mode if you don't have one, you can create one for your map in the content browser. We will need a few float variables for our current and max power. We will also need one for removal value, which will control the power decrease and well total power of all objects being used. We can also have a boolean variable to check if the power is on. Compile and then turn the default value of this to true. We can set our max power and current power to value of 1.0. The removal value will start with 0.01, so you still lose power even if you are not using cameras or doors. Also, on the event begin play, you can just do a get max power and set current power. We now want to create a few custom events, first one for removing power which will be on a timer. We will get current power and set power. Now. I have a little think about it and I decided to create another event just for adjusting the power. We then do current power minus the amount which we will have as the input of the event. As a just in case, I clamp the value between 0 and max power. We will do the widget later, we can now call our adjust power and the amount for now is removal value. Now. I think the UI is next. In the game, there is two text, a power percent and a usage. For this episode, I want to just do the power percentage. Now you can do this in a new widget, but I think I will just keep it as a single text in the clock widget. We can add a text block onto the canvas panel and under the clock text. Give it a base text and then rename it to power text and check the is variable box. We can do the code in the widget but I think I will show you it in the game mode, go back to your event. Then get your character reference and get the player widget reference and then the reference to the clock, it may vary on your widgets and you can always join the discord and send images of your code. We then want to get our power text and do a set text. If it does not appear, make sure that you compiled and saved the widget. Now, I want to design my text, so I will be using a format text. The curly brackets, input name. And then close brackets, then I want to add a percent sign. Now I want to get the current power and divide it by the max power. I then want to multiply that by 100 to get the percent. But it will be a float. I want the UI to have no decimals so it should be an int. You need to get the round node. We have most of this set up, we can now just go to our event begin play and test this out. Get a delay and set like 4 seconds. In the upcoming episodes after animatronics, I want to do phone calls and the delay will be based on that. We can now call remove power. Ok, so now, I want to continue the adjust power event, deal with what happens when power is zero. So first get a branch. Get current power and do a less than equals to zero. On true power is off and on false. We can do a delay of 2 seconds, and call the remove power event again. Now, here is the thing, at the end I am going to focus on this delay and the removal value and show you how we can use this delay to get a smoother power decrease. On true, we want to do a print string to say death or power off, and then pause the game for now. Compile, save, and test and every few seconds it should remove power. If you want, play around with the removal value and delay soon the speed will depend on night number. Now somewhere else, let's create a custom event to update the removal value when you interact with the door and light buttons. First do a set removal value, and the input is amount, this is similar to the adjust power event. We want to get removal value and add an amount which gets clamped between 0.01 and 1. Now we can check this first method, compile and save. Open up your button and we will need to do a few things. First on your on clicked, do a branch. Get your game mode ref and get is power on. If true, 
The code can continue, if false, we can play a failed sound at location. Now when we switch on the button, we want to get our game mode reference, and call our add power usage event. Here we can promote that to a variable and have a float called power usage. This is so doors, cameras, and lights can have different power values. For example, let's have it be 0.2, we can change it individually later. On switched off, we can copy and paste it but we want to do power usage multiplied by minus 1, in order to get a negative number, this means we are doing the opposite, we are removing the power usage value. Ok now I am just going to go find the buttons and change their values. The value is O the class defaults, the door will be like 0.04. We can now test the game to see it work. But as you see, it works but the decrease is not smooth, it's choppy. This is due to us going from removing 1% to 6% then to 10% every 2 seconds and it feels odd. While you can keep this option, I am going to go on to the second method which is for if anyone wants it to be smoother. Let's go back to our game mode, now time to have think. We can either keep the removal value or create a new variable. We could keep certain events or make a new event. I am just going to be using a whole different set of variables and events to make this learning process easier. So first, let's make a custom event to adjust delay rate and a float variable for delay value. After we can do a set delay value, we can get a delay value, we can do a minus, even though an add is fine, just the amounts would be reversed. Now add the clamp node, and clamp between 0.5 and 5.0. Now trat delay we have before we call the value, we can now just replace that with the delay value. Compile, save, and go to your button master. We want to now replace this with the adjust delay rate and just add the power usage or a different variable since for this, the power usage needs to be higher values than 0.02, I am thinking numbers like 0.6 or 1.5. For example, say we kept the power usage as our old values when we test the game, it's not really that much of an effect. Not really decreasing fast enough unless you do like this. I am going to change the numbers now and test it. As you can see when we get there, the numbers are decreasing a lot faster. Now back to the game mode, I have a few things to do. Also as a side note, if you do keep both methods, you can use a boolean to just switch between them, just make sure that on those branches, you adjust the power usage values to sync up with your methods. Anyway, let's now make this delay dependent on the night number, it's a simple divide o the delay value by a number. It could be however you want it. Getting the current night variable from the game instance, divide it by 60 and we want to convert this to float. So when we add 1, it will be something like 1.02 or 1.04 etc. You can also hard code it in using a select node and it's also if you know how many nights you are having. Now for true, this is for when percent is zero. We want to turn off the electricals. First, we set the is power on to false, also we need to add a delay of 4 or 5 seconds before we pause the game. This will be for the Freddy jump scare. Next. Get all actors of class, select the interactable buttons class, and do a for each loop. The rest of the code needs to be connected to the completed. We want to loop through all and switch them off. Now to test it and find some bugs. As you can see, we are slowly decreasing, I will speed it up using the slow mode code. It works, great. Ok, so the first problem is that we can use our security camera once it's zero. That can be fixed by going to the code, getting the player controller and the player pawn and disabling the inputs of that pawn class. I think it's better if you do that after the delay since you still want your player camera to move around. We can however fix the camera widget problem by getting a reference to your player widget by the player character. 
we can then get a reference to the camera hover button and just set is enabled to false. Now you can properly test it and see if it works. This is all for now, comment below or join the discord for any problems. Next time, I will be going into animatronics, final details and then the next stage of this series. In the meantime, I want to also set up a good workflow so I can upload all the other videos that I have done. Hope you enjoyed this video, consider subscribing and liking the video. See you next time.